Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, Mr. Juan. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Ready to get this one done? Let's crank it out. All righty. Out. Okay. So we're talking about plate tectonics today. Um, and Alfred Wegener, really cool guy in plate tectonics. And we're going to be able to identify the pieces of evidence that he used to support his continental drift theory, right? Okay. So okay. we're probably going to be talking about the solid earth, so geosphere here, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the pieces of evidence. Okay. Starting with quick bio. Um, Alfred Wegener, German meteorologist. He studied like climate data, weather data back in like the late 1800s. Um, and he was the one who proposed the theory of continental drift. Uh, he had four pieces of evidence, and we'll go through those in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody really believed him. Nobody accepted his data as being valid. Why not? Well, there was one thing that scientists were looking for. They were looking for a mechanism that would cause the continents to move. And he had a lot of data showing why he thought they had moved, mm -hmm. but he didn't have data that said, hey, this is how I think this is happening. Yeah. And so they didn't, they didn't believe him. And for a long time, up until the late 60s and even early 70s, no one was really buying in to the idea of continental drift. Finally, the, the geoscience community came around to it with some additional evidence that was provided, but uh, not until then. Yeah, because he basically just didn't have a way to move an entire continent, right? Because he was saying the continents were moving. They'd ask how. He'd said, I don't know. I don't <laughs> have a mechanism, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and kind of unfortunate, strange piece of trivia. Uh, he died in Greenland while doing some of his field work. Yeah. And they left him there. They buried him under some ice, and he's been buried ever since. A hundred meters of ice there. But he would be proud to know that the geoscience community now all believes in his idea. Absolutely. They yeah. accept all his data, and they accept his uh, conclusions that he made. So let's look at the first of those four pieces of evidence. Cool. All right. So we've got the uh, puzzle-like fit of the continents. I think back in elementary school or middle school, we all looked at puzzles of the continents, and we said, wow, Africa and South America look like if you rotated them a little bit, mm -hmm. South America would just fit into Africa like it had maybe been there at one time. Yeah. And he noticed that, too, and he said, maybe the continents went back together like they're shown here on the slide. Mm -hmm. And now they're separated, and that was his original single piece of evidence, evidence that he kind of started out with. So he was saying, basically, if you could move continents around, they would line up, and at some point they might have all been together. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds reasonable to me. Yep. Okay, second piece. Yeah. Uh, he looked at some of the climate that he saw on some of the continents. Now, if you take a look at the picture on the left, uh, he actually found evidence of glaciers in South America, in Africa, in India, and in Australia. Now, there's no glaciers there now, right? As a matter of fact, it's probably close to tropical in all of those locations, yeah. so there wouldn't be glaciers. Yeah, and some of the evidence of glaciers, he saw like when a glacier moves along a surface, like it scratches the surface mm -hmm. and it leaves lines and it actually like, kind of points towards the direction it was going. Mm -hmm. um, and he saw those striations. Right. And then when glaciers melt, they drop all the rocks and mud and silt and clay. They drop it all and it mixes up. And uh, he saw that, like that glacial till there. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking like, you know, India, it's a tropical climate. Why would there ever be glaciers there? So if we look at the picture on the right, mm -hmm. we can think that if those continents were in a different position than they're in now, so okay. they were further to the south, okay. maybe with the center of Antarctica still over the South Pole, okay. that the areas in white on that picture might have been covered by an ice sheet. Oh, okay. And if you look at the black arrows here, you can see that the suggestion is that the ice sheet was centered and was moving outward in all directions, oh, which is kind okay. of how all those black arrows are pointing. Okay. So with Africa and South America connected up, one piece of ice was spreading kind of to the south and west. Okay from the southern portion of Africa, and India, because it was on the north and east, was spreading, the ice was spreading out to the north and east. Cool, so it even supports that puzzle piece again, like where those puzzle pieces were lining up with those mm -hmm. striations. Mm -hmm. Cool, all right, halfway there. Yep. All right, so now we can talk about some evidence from rock formations. Okay. As he looked at the formations and the structures, the folds, the way the rocks are oriented mm -hmm. across the Appalachians up into Greenland, and then skip across the Atlantic Ocean to Scandinavia, down across the British Isles, and across that western, northwestern tip of Africa. Mm -hmm. 
those rocks look like they're the same type of rock, the same ages of rocks, oh. and they have the same kinds of structures. Okay. So you can look from the Caledonian Mountains up in Scandinavia down across the British Isles and mm -hmm. into the Appalachian Mountains uh -huh. and find continuity in the rocks and the structures oh, that again cool. would indicate that maybe they were all connected up and maybe they formed at the same time when they were connected up and now they've just been split apart. Okay. And so we're still seeing the evidence that they were connected up, but mm -hmm. they're on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. So like if you took somebody from the Appalachian Mountains and like plopped them in Africa and just said, look at the rocks, they'd see the same thing, right? They would be very similar, yeah. Wow, okay, cool. All right, last piece of evidence. Uh, we're gonna talk about fossils. Good. So he actually found some uh, fossil evidence um, on different continents of the same fossils. Yeah. So what was really neat is too, like some of them didn't really make sense that they were even there. Mm -hmm. Like he found this one called Glossopteris, yeah. which was an ancient fern mm -hmm. species, and he found it on Antarctica. Um, uh. Ice, very cold, <laughs> no ferns are growing in Antarctica right now. So yeah. how could that be if Antarctica wasn't in a location closer to the equator. Uh, well, it had to have been somewhere that was further north where you could have a climate where basically you had the ferns growing. Yeah, could grow, mm -hmm. okay. And if, actually, if we take a look at our puzzle example, yeah, uh, you can see that they found Glossopteris, this little fern or leaf here, uh, they found it in Antarctica, mm -hmm. and then in Australia, yep. and India, and Africa, there's Madagascar in here, and mm -hmm. South America. They found it all those places. Right, so that would probably suggest that not only was that area together because of the climate, mm -hmm. but also if those continents were separated, mm -hmm. that that species, that Glossopteris species, and the other species of animals that were found in different places, mm -hmm. they would not have evolved to be the same thing. So yeah. think about animals like chimpanzees in Africa. Yeah. We don't find those in South America. No. Tapers in South America, we don't find those in Africa. But these older fossil species, we do find mm -hmm. in both continents, which would indicate that they were together and they evolved together and that's why it's the same species. Mm -hmm. If they were separated, they would have evolved into two different or multiple species, right? Yeah, like this Cygnognathus uh, was a quadruped that walked uh -huh. and they found it in Africa and in South America. So they were found around the same time. Yeah. So they were able to walk basically across the two continents and since they were the same time, they didn't evolve into anything else. Right. Okay. Yep, so the fossils are the same age. Okay. But we know that had those continents been separated, they couldn't swim or walk yeah. across what's now the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Okay. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah, so those are our four lines of evidence that Wegner had. And you guys have a quiz out there on your class website. Hop out. Remember to go back over your notes, go back through the video if you need to, and take that quiz. And also, we've got bonus video. This one's sweet. It's a great music video. Uh, their science is decent, but it's just a fun video talking about Alfred Wegener, uh, the posthumous triumph of Alfred Wegener. Awesome. Enjoy. We'll Enjoy. see you guys later. Bye, guys.